The PVA bag is not something you can just use over the winter period, it's something that you can use all year round with great effects. It's put some absolute bangers on the bank for me over the, few, over the years I've been fishing. So maybe you're someone who's just joined the fishing world and doesn't really know how to tie this rig. Now this video is perfect for that. But also, if you're an experienced angler and maybe you've tied PVA bags week in, week out, you still may be able to take something away from this video. I am going to be doing a giveaway. I'm not giving away a flat spot. I'm not giving away a pot of magic beans. What I am doing is I'm giving away all of this in front of you in this video. And by the end of this video, I'm going to, you'll know exactly how you can enter and have a chance to win all these products in front of me. Not only that, Gemini Tackinal's got involved as well and we have got their PVA bag 100% um, fluorocarbon leaders. Not only that, SAS Solid Angling Solutions have got involved as well and they have thrown in a load of goodies. Look at this, PVA coming out of PVA and some syringes as well, top ups and also some mesh as well. So stay tuned, enjoy this video. You see. The things that you're going to need to make the perfect PVA bag. Now this is going to get you down to the point where you've literally got something you can tie on into the end of your main line and you are good to go. You're fishing. And not only that, you can catch big fish anywhere in the country or around Europe with this. I've had fish in excess of £40 using these methods and it's definitely a game changer. So. Let's kick it off. The first thing in is braid. Now this is my go-to braid. This is super natural there. And this is from Corda. It's a 25 pound and I feel the perfect scenario for a PVA bag. It's very forgiving. It's very supple, this particular one. You know, you can screw it up and then it sort of goes back. What also I love about this particular braid is that if you do make, when I do make a straight up rig of it, it's very forgiving on the bottom and it sort of moulds to the bottom which therefore makes it a little bit invisible for them fish to see. But when you're fishing very short hook links that we are today, which I'm going to tie in a second, in the PVA bag, with the pellet going over the top of this, this becomes almost invisible. So there it is, that's the first component and there it is, Supernatural Braid from Calder. Next up is obviously the hook, the business end. Now this is my favourite hook. This is a rigger and this is one of my favourite hooks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get one out and show you in person because these are devastating in their own right. Now some people may be looking at that and think, oh my God, very aggressive and it's not my cup of tea. Well, it's certainly cup my cup of tea or coffee if you like because of that eye at the top. It's, it's kicked right round and then when you start putting shrink tube on this, you've got something, you've got a hook basically on steroids. It's very, very, very hard for them carp to deal with. But also love this smart little box it comes in to keep them hooks sharp as sharp. And out of the packet, they are very, very sharp hooks, which is another reason why I love them. You can put one of these bad boys on and know you are fishing and also have a hook that's like a needle. So next up is Thinking Tackle Shrink Tube. Now this is their medium one. Why do I need a good medium, a good sized medium? The reason for that is, is because the eyes on the hooks are quite big. It's a very thick wire hook. So you need something to be able to go over that without crimping up. I've done it before with other shrink tubes and it all goes horrible and it starts um, changing the colour of the shrink tube and you, it's just not right in my eyes. This, I've never had the problem. You're also going to need some bait stops. These are the ESP ones. Again, you can use whichever any ones you want. So whatever hook bait you've got on, it just holds it on the end of the hair there. So you pull one off and you just pop one in the end, pull it down and it stops it from coming off the end of the hook. Next up is these bad boys. Now again, I'm sure you could use other brands, but I feel these work with the Gemini Tackle ones very well. So this is the solid bag. These are the long stems for PVA bags. Now they're, you can tr trim them down if you want, but I like keeping them nice and long and there's a big reason for that. You can be that little bit more aggressive with it. When you lick and stick the end, you can pull it round that nib here and make it look prettier and also more aerodynamic as well. Hook bait of your choice? Well, it'd be rude not to put a magic bean on, wouldn't it? There it is, the Parker Bait Magic Beans, and definitely made a name for himself in the bait world over the duration of <laughs> the duration of the last two months since they've been out. Absolutely devastating these are, um, and if you haven't tried them, get on them because you're missing out for sure. You're gonna need some scissors, a lighter, and obviously these bad boys, 100% fluorocarbon Gemini booms. They're almost invisible on the bottom. Now tell me I'm wrong. Grab a pack of these, 
Go up to the German Eye website, grab a pack of these, put them in the water, put them down in some debris in the water and they literally disappear. 100% fluorocarbon leaders, perfect for the PVA, PVA bag scenario. Quick, easy and also you get some heat going through it. Like so. And what you'll find is they become, <laughs> look at that, I've literally not even done that for very long and it's already becoming straight. You know, if you do that a little bit longer, you can guarantee that you know that's gonna sit absolutely lovely and uniform on the bottom. Look at that, beautiful. Simple, simple stuff here. All I'm gonna do is, is just come round, put it back through, like so, and then just easily tease that up, like that. I don't want the loop to be too small, and the reason for that is, is when you pull, if you're using a thicker material, what you'll find is it might hinder the magic bean, especially if you're fishing really hard hook baits. I've had it split it before, so if you, the longer you do it down, depending on the size of the hook bait you're using, it will help support that hook bait. Doing too small, sometimes you can pull that knot in and it pops it. So that is where I'm at at the moment. All I'm gonna do is, is just cut that tag end off. So there it is, that's done nice and neat. There's the tag behind and that nice little loop right on the end there. Took bait of choice, a pink magic beans, one of my favorite and something that's done me a lot of bites. Job done, all I need now is a bait stop. So I'm gonna put one of them on. A little bait slot, just two little bits. Popping her through there, look. Job done. Right, so next up, is obviously cutting the braid. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out about a foot and then it makes it easier for it to tie because you've got lots of material to play with. So that's what I'm gonna do and I'd advise, if you've not done this before, definitely cutting off a little bit more to make it easy for yourself so it's not all fingers and thumbs. What I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna go through the back of the eye. You always, always go through the back of the eye. So now you've got something that looks similar. To this here. Now I like it sitting off the back of the hook, something along them lines there, just touching the bottom. Now what will happen is when I put the shrink tube on, it will um, sort of kick that out a little bit down the back. I fish a longer bit of shrink tube on mine. That's just something I've always done. Now all I'm going to do is is lube up this end, which I've done. All I've done is just put a bit of moisture down on that bit there, like so. And all I'm going to do is simple stuff is basically whip down the back of the hook there, making sure that I sort of slowly go down. And what I'm trying to do is there, is just make it as neat as humanly possible. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And what I do is I always like to do a lock off. So I come back once and then what I do is I come back twice, but on the twice one, I'm gonna go back through the eye, back through the back of the eye there again, like so. Keeping my finger on it and slowly teasing it through. And what this does is, is make sure that you don't get any twist up, twists up, twist up. <laughs> it doesn't twist up and looks neat. So then you've got something like that. You get your shrink tube of choice, then what I'm gonna do is, I trim about, I would say, maybe just under two centimetres there, that is. That's obviously gonna go down the back again. So I start from the top, pull it down, and then this is where it gets maybe a little tricky. So you wanna tease it in. Now I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, you don't wanna crimp it all up, but because this is a medium one, it's slightly bigger than normal, I feel, it sits on absolutely beautiful. So then you'll get in something that looks like that. You can see that I've left almost three mil, sort of four mil maybe there, just off the back. And what that does is, is when you run that over the steamer, it makes that eye, the, the eye is already aggressive, but then when you start steaming that, it makes it more aggressive than it already is. You've got the flexibility for the magic bean to move, so you've probably got about five mil movement there. Now if I put it like that, you're gonna see that better. So it'll sit, it'll sort of sit and waft like that, bearing out this is a wafter. And again, perfect, absolutely perfect for the PVA bag scenario. I've literally brought that back from the steamer there. And if I just drop that bean, look, so you can get a gauge, she's sitting lovely. So everything's now pulled nice and tight to the hook. If you follow this as a line, it's just below or just in line with it as well. So the, the point of the hook is sort of finishing where that shrink tube is. Now that is quite a long bit of shrink tube. A lot of people go, oh, I don't like too much on the hook. 
I've never had it, I've never ever ever had an issue. And the other thing I do find is, especially if you're using this as just a straight up rig, if you don't run the tube in that far down, what you can find is, is the bait actually swings around the hook and can get caught sometimes. This eliminates that again if you're just using it as a normal rig setup. Now moving down from this, I've literally just steamed it and it's went into the place that the steamer has kicked. The only thing I would say is, is obviously there's a tiny little bit more of an angle on there. So the eye, the eye of the hook's coming out here and it's probably a mil pulled up from that, if that makes sense. Just up from it, which again is all it's doing is making that sort of extending the extending the eye there and make it even more aggressive than it already is this hook i've said this hook is devastating as it is when you start doing this to it you've got saying that like i said the fish you're going to really struggle dealing with so that is that that's the shrink tube on the knot then whipped down the pink magic bean on now it's to cut this section here and i just need literally need to put a loop on the end of it and we're nearly done guys all i'm going to do is now is just basically do an overhand and then pull her back through um, really simple I want to keep the knot quite big here and the reason for that is is when I put it on that six mil like that really really small this here is probably only four inches maybe just over that is a very 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 short rig um, but the, again the aggressiveness comes into it then you're fishing inline lead they pick it up they get pricked they pull away bang instant regret and um, that is what's working for me. Ah, and you can tell how sharp I was going in my finger already. Right, I'm gonna cut this length off here, make this look pretty, and I'll touch base here. So there it is, there's a nice close up for you. Um, exactly what she's looking like, short and sweet. <laughs> Um, and absolutely perfect. So moving on, our next components, obviously got your Gemini fluorocarbon there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that out, and this is what I love about this stuff. So you've got your tail rubber there, the cord one I mentioned earlier, but because these are quite stiff, you've got the flexibility to push it through, like slow, slowly tease it through. And boom comes out the other end and then we're going to pull that down so there it is then you're sort of ended up with that there now next up is get the lead of your choice obviously these are available at the Parker Bait store but this particular one is a just a fox lead that I found at the bottom of the bag so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the lead I'm going to find the swivel here I'm going to just push the swivel in I like to fish in line leads but obviously I like to dump the lead as well. Now this has got, one thing I love about Gemini's fluorocarm leaders, now I'll zoom in for you. Yeah, so one thing I like about the Gemini leaders is it's actually two rings there. So you've got one ring, which obviously your link then gets tied onto, which is the obviously the, the short PVA bag rig I've just made, and obviously the other link then can go over like so. All I would say is of this, make sure when you are doing it, this is free running. The other six mil can move freely because that then helps with the mechanics of the rigs and makes it even more aggressive when it's sat on the bottom. There's nothing that can slip up. It pulls, bang, lead comes off. Fish pulls one way and then you are in complete contact with the fish like so. So just for argument's sake there, there it is. I've actually pulled that over, but it's not sitting right. I've actually pulled the other six mil into the lead there. You do not want this definitely don't want that it's going to play about and not sort of give you a maximized or maximize what this is all about so make sure it's sitting right and i'm going to do that right now so there it is i've done it and now as you can see it's free running there you can see that six mil moving easy and there's plenty of movement so now this is really easy all i'm going to do now is just push the tail rubber on the end there Tail rubber on, and now I'm just going to pull that tight, like so, and just push that back on there, like that. And then you're now left with something that looks like that. Now, going back to the link we made, now all I'm going to do is is pass the loop that I've, that I made originally through the eye of the six mil. Now, the bottom six mil with the, move, the movement, like I mentioned. Now this is where I mentioned to you earlier about me having a big loop, so now all I've got to do is, is just pass that back through here, like so, and pull her tight. Literally as simple and as easy as that. 
Now let me tie the bag. Now we're nearly there, and like I said, this bit in, all you've got to do is tie that to the end of your main line, you are good to go. Now what I'm obviously going to do is just obviously make the PVA bag now, so I've shown you literally everything you need to know when it comes to tying the rig, applying the, obviously putting the, putting the lead on and obviously adding that tail rubber, also making the most of the Gemini 100% fluorocarbon leaders. So, let's do this right now and make the bag. First of all, I've got a, it's a medium solid angling solutions PVA bag there. Again, you can use any PVA or choices, the ones I've got in front of me, and also, like I said, they've supported this video by giving some of their PVA bags. So it'd be rude not to use one of theirs. So this is their medium bags, and I feel the perfect size for what I'm trying to achieve here. So before I do absolutely anything, what I do is I open our Parker Bates Magic Dust. Now there's 25 different food particles in here, very stimulating to carp, but also perfect for stopping hindering that hook point. So what I'll do is, obviously I am putting a two mil pellet in this, a two or one, there's 1.5s in there as well in the mini mix, which I'll show in a second. But by putting this in the bottom, what you're doing is you're eliminating this hook point from blowing. The chances of a two mil pellet is pretty slim going in it, but just to be safe, I do it like this. So. Magic dust in the bottom now, it's all a bit fingers and thumbs this, but what you need to make sure you're doing is, is flipping that round, and now all I'm doing is, is pulling that magic beam right into one of the corners. Now this is the way I've done it, and I've done it like this for absolutely years. Now that hook point now is gone under. You can't see it, and the boy, the bait is off to the side, going off the back of the hook into the other side. So the hook's over here, and, the, and the, your hook bait's down the other side. Now some people put pellet in first, and they put it to the back of the bag, and it all gets technical. This is how I do it, and it's caught me plenty of fish, and I've never had any issues, so I'm gonna continue doing it this way. So with my finger now, I've pushed it against the back. Now obviously what I'm gonna try and do is, <laughs> I'm gonna try and open up these bad boys now. There it is, mini mix pellet. So again, I'm making a right mess here and Emma's gonna kill me, but they're going in there like that. Like so. She's definitely gonna kill me. So there it is, I've half filled the bag up there. Now this is when it gets interesting. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm now gonna lower, lower the actual stem and you can obviously again this is another benefit here of that tail rubber I can use that to push that in but I'm also always going to keep it directly in the middle of the bag so like slow slowly tease it in knowing that that knowing that also the braided material is not all crimped up it's gone in the side and up the side of the bag and like I said I've just pushed that in the top so it looks something like that when you're looking at it from above so I'm pushing that in neat like so now what I'm gonna do is, I like to put a little bit more magic dust in this at this point. So I'll put a little bit more sprinkle of magic dust and what this does, it pops and bangs on the bottom. Not quite the bang, but you can see what I mean. That the different food particles make it flip up and kick up for all the different levels of the water column. Now I'm finishing it off now with a few more of the mess I've made on the bottom there of the mini mix pellet. Like I say, it consists of five different pellets which give you five different breakdowns on the, back, on the bottom. And, f and five different high-end pellet as well. So again, using my finger, keeping that tail rubber coming out from the middle, I'm using my finger to push it down here. So what I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna obviously push the end down and just, what you do is again, if you're new to this, take your time with it. It is all fingers and thumbs, it's a right pain sometimes, and especially if you're new to making PVA bags. So there it is. Now what I'm gonna do is, now I've got that sort of hardness to the bag, tapping it down slowly as I go, making sure that that rubber is sitting directly in the middle. Now what I do find is if I'm fishing in excess of 25 wraps, or even, even up to 20 wraps of this, if, you, if your rubber is sticking up, it's sort of coming out to the side of the bag, it, it, it sort of does this in the air. You put it coming out through the middle, you're giving yourself your best, the best chance you can in regards to aerodynamics. And now what I'm gonna do is now is twist it. Now I've twisted it a couple of times there. Now 
you can use anything you want. You can use PVA um, string or tape. Now this is the tape. Now what I tend to do is I pull out a length like so I, and I'll run it around the back of my fingers. I then pinch back down with my other fingers and then go back round like so. Pull out plenty of access and it makes it easier then. And then all, you, all you're going to do is put that on the deck there and I'm just going to do some granny knots like so. So one, two, or three there. Sorry, that's three. I'm not going to like, there we go. Now what you can do is then, is obviously snip these off. Like that. And you're left with something that looks beautiful. Now all I'm going to do is, you're moistening up the end. I don't go too crazy, but then what I'm going to do is, like, this is why I said to you at the beginning, you can really make it lovely and neat. I've literally just lubed that up there and pulled that round and she looks absolutely lovely and also going to help her in dynamics and also just seal off that end of the bag. Next up is the two ends. Now what I like to do is, I've obviously patted down the sides. I've done a little bit before I've started this clip, I'm not going to lie. So I've got two little ears, if you like, there on the back. Again, for people that have never tied one before. So now all I'm going to do is simple stuff. Nick the bag and then stick the bag like so. Push down, lick the bag, and also again stick the bag again like so. Now it's really starting to come into its own now that bag, nice and tight, and um, it's definitely going to do what it says on the tin. Now it's going to be quite interesting. I'm going to drop this into a p well, drop this into a tank in a minute, so we can actually see what's going on. That's a very simple way of constructing the rig putting it in a PVA bag and literally will catch you catch a fish anywhere in the world. So I've went over the rig inside, the hook bait of choice, the magic the magic mitter with a mini mix pellet, the magic dust obviously stopped the hook point blowing out the bottom there and obviously that Gemini boom that makes things every, everything so much easier. None of no um, splicing of leg core or anything like that. And another good thing with this is if leg core is banned on your lake, you can get away with using these bad boys, which is another edge in itself. Something that I really, really do love. It's just so quick and easy. And because these ends are fused, and you'll see this on the um, Gemini website, because they've got fused ends, I just feel it gives you an edge. There's less going on. So, right, what I'm going to do is now. I'm going to pull the tank over, I'm going to drop that in and I'm going to show you exactly what this does in a second. At this point now we can start injecting it with our um, flat spot or whatever that may be. I mean flat spot's my go to, the monster crab or the fruity and if I've got a, a, a sneaky bottle of um, our Scopex flat spot obviously I will go in with that. That's one of my favourites to be honest but we've only got limited numbers of that and we only bring it on, bring it to shows of us. So, without further ado, I'm going to pull the tank over and we're going to see exactly what happens. Right, you can see me the other side of the tank here now. So there it is, exactly what I've just gone over, the PVA bag. At this point now, I would be adding the, the flat spot. Now what I do is I tend to inject the end of the bag with this, but I'm not going to do it for video and purposes because I just want to show you this is, this is about the bag itself and not our products here at Parker Bates. So, let's drop her in and let's see exactly what happens and I'm going to talk through exactly sort of what I'm seeing and we'll go over it together. So I'm going to drop the bag in, there it is straight away, just straighten her up there. And straight away immediately you can see her sitting on the bottom. Now as the water starts ingressing into the, so obviously the PVA bag it's going to melt down, it's going to start breaking down very slowly. Now you can already see it taking on air there now and pop, off we go. The mini mix is already starting to activate and sort of pop up and sit absolutely beautiful on that bottom there. Now what I do love about the mini mix pellet and the way I've tied this bag now is what you'll find is the pellet is actually covered the lead itself. And there it is, popping through there, that magic bean. You can't even see the hook. The hook is underneath the pellet. Again, the magic dust itself is starting to pip up. You can see little bits now, little food particles pop up through the back there and up. There's some even floating to the top. I've got some hemp there popping up. 
I've got some CLO content. Oh, look at it. It looks absolutely brilliant. And down by the magic bean itself, obviously, where we put that uh, magic dust here, where we put this in, what it's done is it's left loads of little food particles and it's like fizzing right around that hook base. As you can see, the magic bean is sitting absolutely beautiful. You can't see the hook. The, the, the mini mix pellets covered the actual lead itself and that is one suck game over. So there it is, how it reacts to the water, the magic dust doing the do, the mini mix pellet doing the do and obviously the sexy magic beans doing the do as well. That little pinky sit off the back of that hook. <sighs> That's a bite, baby. So there it is, a very, very quick video on how to tie a PVA bag rig and obviously how to tie the bag itself. I really do hope this has helped um, for people that have maybe never tied a bag before, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Now also something else I mentioned at the beginning of this video and I said there was gonna be a giveaway. Now let me touch on that giveaway in a little bit more depth of exactly what I'm giving away and how you enter just before I finish this video. So like I mentioned, we've got three packs there, which is actually nine leaders. So that's the Gemini leaders there, the 100% fluorocarbon leaders, there's three in each pack. That is gonna be something I'm gonna be sending free of charge. Next up, I've got a selection of SAS stuff here. There's loads of different bits in there. You've got different size bags, mesh, syringes, and a few other little naughties as well alongside these two meshes I'm going to send. Some Parker Bates Magic Dust in OG Fruit and Not, but not only that, we're going to give you some Magic Dust in the fish as well. So you've got 27 different food particles in this one, 25 in this one. These are going to be sent to you free of charge. A flat spot of each. Um, this is hemp oil and steroids. That's the only way of putting it across. And again, perfect for the PVA bag scenario. A bait spray of each as well. OG Fish, OG Fruit and Nut, and also PVA bag friendly. Yeah. A pot of our OG Fish 15 mil Magic Beans and also some 12 mils in the fruit and nut there. She so got a little bit of both there. She so got some smaller ones for the winter period or for whatever that um, scenario that meets your needs. And obviously some slightly bigger ones there, which I feel is perfect for fishing them Medusas on top. And then finishing it off a 1kg of a Parker Bates Mini Mix Pellet. So how do you enter? What have you got to do? So it's simple. All you've got to do is just comment down below, Parker Bates Wave. I'll say that again, Parker Bates Wave. The wording is at the bottom of the screen now. If you put that in, what we're going to do is I'm going to put all the comments into a random uh, comment generator. In a, what we're going to do is I'm going to give it one month from today. That's one month from today. And myself and Steve will put a video up. It probably won't be a minute, but it'll just be a video up or a screen video of, so there's no wall over your eyes. We'll hit that and all the numbers will automatically then, oops, all the numbers, all the comments will then be thrown into the, the comment generator. We'll hit start and whatever name comes up, we will send you all these products free of charge, like I've just mentioned. And hopefully it was exciting and something that you maybe just be able to take a few things away with you and what we've sort of shown today here in the dining room and not at Parker Bates HQ for a, for a change. So there it is. Hope you like this video, guys. If you have, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below. Smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward. And I'll see you all very soon. Peace out.